Hey guys, today I want to be comparing the Aston Martin James Bond Lego Creator Expert Set 10262, Aston Martin DB5, with the Mustang Lego Creator Set 10265. Now these two sets uh, I both got recently as gifts. Um, I do work in the automotive space although I prefer Lego Castle in general. Um, and these sets are very similar. They have the same MSRP. They have similar piece count. We have $14.71 for the Mustang, and we have $12.95 for the Aston Martin. And they are quite similar, but they're also quite different. And if you were wondering which one to buy, I want to compare them here uh, to help you make your decision, because they're both good sets. and Maybe someone who's going to buy the Aston Martin wouldn't even consider the Mustang anyway. But I still want to go over their differences because although they're quite similar and have lots of features, they're also quite different. So uh, looking at the boxes, the Mustang box is a lot thicker than the Aston Martin box, almost by two, almost double the thickness. Other than that, the boxes are the same size. They have the same. Uh, they have the same height and length. They just have a different width. Again, the Mustang is almost two hundred pieces more than the Aston Martin, but the boxes are similar. Um, the instruction booklets, I think, are very different. So the Mustang one has lots of information inside about the vehicle and also the Lego design. And then it also randomly, don't know if I'll just land on to one of them, but it also randomly has facts about the vehicle itself scattered throughout. Mustangs, how they were produced and their design over the years. Here's one to mark its 50th birthday in 2014. Ford assembled a Mustang on the 86th floor observation deck of the Empire State Building, and then also in French and Spanish. For the James Bond instruction booklet, um, this one, right off the bat, you can see it's not a normal Lego instruction booklet. It has that classified file look, including military... Uh, uh, military intelligence stamp and some Q branch. So it's very creatively done. There are no facts about the vehicle scattered throughout the instruction booklet that I can remember. Um, but it does have a lot of facts in the beginning. Also, it does look like a classified document for some reason, only in English and French, no Spanish. It does have photos from the vehicles and some of the actors. And it also has some vehicle specs. So similar, I really love this design of the Aston Martin instruction booklet. I've never seen this instruction booklet from Lego before. I think it's very creative, very cool. Um, for someone who saves instruction booklets, that one will definitely be near the top of the list. Now for stickers, we have over here the Mustang sticker with 14 numbered, but due to some doubles on the license plate, there are 19 stickers. And here the Aston Martin sticker sheet has 12 stickers, but again, we have the license plates renumbered, so there are in fact 16 stickers. So similar in sticker count, and a lot of those are license plate. You can see here because of the American license plates, these are slightly different sized than the European license plate. Um, so nothing so different or so special, but let's put those aside. I'll come back to the sticker sheet later. For the extra pieces, I'd rather not hold them. Let me just put them here. Because the Mustang has a lot of customization, um, these I would consider extra pieces, such as the spoiler, I suppose the NOS tank as well, if I can get that out. And also here, these 
These would be what I consider the extra pieces. So the Mustang has a lot more extra pieces, but again, that's due to the customization. Also, the Aston Martin, all of its license plates fit on the vehicle itself. So all four of the license plates fit on this rotating license plate feature. So it's not exactly an apples to apples comparison. I would say the extra pieces for them are roughly about the same if you don't count the customization features. Now let's go to the vehicles themselves. So the Aston Martin has a lot of the features from the movie. Um, let me start with its weaknesses. Its weaknesses is that the wheels do not actually turn. They, they spin, but they you cannot turn a corner with them. Uh, that is one of its biggest weaknesses. Also, I don't really like the way the headlights are done. Let me get back to the lights. So this is one of the features is the using the stick shift here in the middle. You can make the um, lower headlights turn, or maybe they're the blinkers, turn into machine guns. It does have a relatively detailed engine bay, three carburetors, an inline dual overhead cam v, uh, inline six cylinder. And there are, there is uh, the exhaust port, rather hard to see, but it is done with revolvers creative, creatively. Also the hood has to kind of bend inward. And so they've done a good job about um, having the hood being able to open. This is also a rather nice design here. It just barely sticks out. I think it's really well done. That does look like the model. We have a DB5 sticker here and also Aston Martin stickers here. So far, the only ones from Lego. Then we have an is the passenger. Oop, I didn't quite do that right. So pull back will open the top and then letting go will let the passenger seat fly. This works pretty well, maybe 80% of the time. And then while that's open, you can see inside the radar can switch to a normal heater vent. And on the driver's side, we have a door here that opens to reveal a phone. Nothing special on today's tech, but at the time was quite impressive. Okay, and then we also have, if you turn the exhaust clockwise, you can lift up the bulletproof shield. You can also access the trunk. And this of course also has spinning license plates. So many features from the movie, I would say all of the main features that I can remember from the movie. Um, so quite good, but a bit, I, I really didn't like the headlight design. I like this grill design. It does look like sort of you know, what I call the Aston Martin fish face, um, but I wasn't so impressed with the headlights. Now let's go to the Mustang. So the Mustang uh, is not modeled off of a movie, although it has been in some movies. This is the 1967 Fastback model. And so fastback because they also had a coupe, which uh, sort of cut off, didn't have this nice sleek aerodynamic design. This one also the trunk opens with limited trunk space, just like in real life. This one, the doors open, and I think these doors are a bit better. They have that kind of satisfying thud, whereas the Aston Martin has a bit of a gap in the doors. And this one, obviously no contact, so it doesn't have that thud except for just as it's hitting the, the seat. They both have handles. They both have um, rear view mirrors, although uh, side view mirrors, although these side view mirrors are kind of on top of the car in that sort of uh, Japanese and British car style. So here too, we have a de very detailed engine. We have, you know, extra coolant. We have the radiator fan look 
along with the uh, radiator cap. We have the v big V8 engine, 390 cubic centi cubic inches, which is, I don't know, about a six liter or so. Um, we also have a battery here with a plus and a minus, which is also rather creative. For the inside of the Mustang, we can also remove the roof here. Here we also have a, what looks like a very classic car, maybe a Pontiac GTO in the rear headlight, in the rear view mirror. We have what looks like a very realistic stick shifter from the 60s. Uh, the doors have less detail on the inside. There's no real handle on the inside. Um, but the inside does really look like a Mustang. We have good leg room in the front, which um, my friend who had a 60s Mustang did also have. And we have terrible leg room in the back, which is also quite realistic. Uh, here, the wheels do turn. And in fact, the steering wheel does turn the wheels. So maybe I'm also biased in my judgment because... In fact, the Mustang can turn the wheels and the Aston Martin cannot. Also, the Mustang has a lot of extra, let's say, customizable features. So you can add some exhaust here to pretend you have no catalytic converter or muffler. You can add them on both sides, actually. You have two of them. You can also take off this and the air filter because who needs filtered air anyway? And you can put in a massive engine, massive blower motor. You can add some ground effects in the front. You can jack up the car in the back using this wheel. You can also add a spoiler in the back in the trunk. And there's also a nitrous oxide can, which you, which they show in the trunk, which is quite a common place for it. So lots of customization possible on the Mustang. And of course, as I said, it does come with a lot of license plates. So these cars are very similar in that, again, same price range, roughly same piece count, lots of features although different kinds of features. The Mustang is very customizable and is more of a showpiece, but is in fact also more of a real car um, because the steering works and you can play with the suspension a bit. The Aston Martin is also a good showpiece, but kind of for a different purpose of sort of showing off to your friends some of how Lego has remodeled some of the main features from this iconic car and the movie it played in. So if I was to choose one over the other, luckily I don't have to do that, but if I was to choose one over the other, I would, to my own surprise, I would choose the Mustang because I really do like how it does fit the part of a, a real car quite well. Um, and it also, it really looks good. And this is the color I also like for Mustang. I'm not a massive fan of Mustang, but I definitely don't hate them. And... I I am a bit surprised myself, um, but I would probably prefer the Mustang in, if I had to choose one. So I hope that helped you pick one if you're uh, deciding which one to get. And thanks for watching.